Okay game, so Doubt is playing against Eswal. Eswal is number 53 on the leaderboards. So let's take a look at that. Oasis with Mongols versus Vietnamese for Doubt. Yeah, that's actually true when they're nomad as well. You can see the top 100, but you cannot see anyone else because you cannot see the ratings. So you're not like, hey, I haven't seen this guy playing, but uh, he's high rated, let's check him out. Because you just see a random name and you cannot actually relate that. You have to manually check for everyone's ratings. But anyways, uh, we got an Oasis game over here, S Wall in a blue. Uh, he is number 53 on the leaderboard, right now playing as Mongols. And on the northern part of the map, it's gonna be Doubt in red, playing as Vietnamese. And he's got a very, very thin wood line over here, which is not so beneficial for him. Blue also is a very thin wood line, so it's gonna be interesting to see how they actually work around this one. Um, very nicely spread out gold for blue, that's actually quite critical, so that he has gold on both sides of his base. If he gets pressured from one side, he can just uh, go for the other one, so that's actually a very decent benefit for him. On the other side, you are gonna have... Uh, Kind of the same thing for Doubt. Fairly equally balanced gold mines. Stones are kind of clustered together, which could be a problem. But aside from that, it's an okay map for Doubt. And you can see a quite aggressive scouting here from Blue. So it is minute two, and you already see him moving forward. In fact, he's gonna steal some sheep from Doubt, because I don't think that Doubt actually expected him to be that front. So when you're scouting with your sheep, you obviously anticipate that your opponent will just be, you know, scouting his own base but it looks like this guy is gonna go super aggressive not sure about whether or not this is good or not like he's got an okay scouting around his base found his gold even though he lacks vision on the other side of the map and oh boy he's returning the sheep that's actually fair play in this case though i don't really know why he went forward this fast so you can't actually recognize anything important to be honest in the early stages Especially if you lose your scout to the scout aggression of doubt here, so... I'm not confident moving forward was a good idea. Maybe he can find how many villages you have on wood, but it's still too early for that. Anyways, doubt is just gonna leave this since uh, hill advantage would be on the side of s wall here. So anyways, um, let's see what we got over here. Three on wood, which makes me believe that this could be a scout's opening from doubt. Would be an interesting one to be honest with Vietnamese, but yeah, Vietnamese is not an amazing civilization by any means. But I would definitely think archers first. But free villagers on wood definitely makes me think it's gonna be straight up scouts. Meanwhile, on the other side for blue, I see free on wood as well. With Mongols, it's much more straightforward that we are gonna see scouts. And honestly, this is, might be something that Doubt is thinking. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point as well when they're nomad. Archers take forever for uh, them to reach the opponent's base. And more importantly, I think since you know that Pongos will go for scouts, you can go for scouts yourself. And the interesting thing is that... Uh, the other interesting thing is that... Uh, I kind of forgot what I wanted to say. That's disappointing. Oh yeah. So the other interesting thing is that he might want to pressure uh, the Mongols player a bit early because in the late game most likely Mongols are much more suitable than uh, than Vietnamese if you ask me. Unless Vietnamese have an insane boom and we are gonna see a bunch of Elephantos. But that requires a big big eco. I think Doubt is or uh, Blue is not gonna wait until that actually builds up and he's gonna start pushing forward with Mango Dyes. So, if you want to delay your opponent towards Mango Dyes, Scout's opening can definitely be an option. And I agree with that, Vander the Nomad. If, if you chop your way through here, and that's not really challenging, and same applies for Doubt, even though he's chopping the deeper tree line of his wood line, but technically you can chop through super easily over here, and that kind of opens up an additional pathway here, right by the lake, close to the opponent's base. So, you can essentially move through here in the middle if uh, you have a nasty overchop. That could be super interesting late game, if someone forgets about an overchop. Anyways, first of feudal, it's gonna be uh, as well. Clicking up at 18 villagers here. Uh, he didn't have any hunting in terms of uh, ibex or uh, deer. Yeah, these guys are kind of far away to hunt, so... 
it's just a standard uh, 19 pop up, still fairly fast, so credits for him on doing that. And there is the Barracks coming up slightly early, I believe. But by the time he reaches Feudal, he's gonna be able to drop the stable. So, so far, his timing is on the point. Meanwhile, on the other side, Delt is not clicking up, so... This might be a fast castle here. Let's see if we see any sign of that. Nope, there is... There is no sign uh, of a fast castle just yet, but he's queuing up even more villagers, so I would anticipate this is gonna be that one. In the long run, probably 24 villagers, 25. He's gonna wall himself off. And honestly, now this could be interesting. Blue does have a scout in here and Doubt doesn't have Loom. This is a perfect spot to snipe a villager. Doubt isn't even going for Loom just yet. So this is possible for uh, Asawa to um, snipe. He even sees this little um, wall part. And now that he's up to feudal, he even sees the villager. This is absolutely death for Doubt here. Even if he had Loom, that's not something that he can prevent. I'm gonna lose one Voyager over here to the Scout of Blue. And this wall, even though it's halfway complete, so there is gonna be no crossing over here. One Voyager down is gonna be Doubt, and it's gonna make his life harder. And indeed, it's gonna be pure fast castle from Doubt. So, question is, what does Blue do to this? Because his Scouts have very little chance of getting through. One thing I could imagine though is trying to make sure that those villagers cannot second layer these walls with the scout you have. This is why Doubt is sending two wheels and his own scout as well. Wants to make sure, remember that Doubt is just in Dark Age so he doesn't have uh, plus two on his scout just yet. So this is actually an okay fight for Blue here um, to take. Doubt just wants to trade his scout off to the one from Blue and that will not really happen. Still there is some health left for Blue. So Blue wants to make sure that there is not gonna be any... Uh, second layering here so that he can actually open up the way for the scouts but honestly with a such low hp scout that seems borderline impossible because doubt is just gonna be able to kill that one with the blue so yeah these scouts will have very little effect on the game honestly this is the point when blue has to realize hey my scouts will not work so he gotta find a new strategy to work with for example start walling himself because he's gonna be in trouble once doubt is up to castle edge we could see we could see forward ranges with crossbows, to be honest, or we could see knights. Honestly, knights might be the approach here from Doubt, but we'll see. Anyways, as you can see, he's gonna be up to feudal, and he will probably drop... Well, he could drop Market and Blacksmith and just go for Castle Age, or he could do something like Stable and Blacksmith as well, so that he can start popping out knights right as he hits Castle Age. That could be an idea as well. We'll see very soon, I guess. Meanwhile, like I said, Blue has very little chance of getting inside, but he's gonna be able to snack some of these uh, neutral sheep here, which is gonna be definitely beneficial for him. At least sometime. Anyways, Market is going up, and I don't see any blacksmiths just yet. But we do have Brax, which makes me think that the other building from Doubt is gonna be a military building. Could be stable, like I said. But yeah, Blue has very little chance of getting inside here. So it is unlikely that he can actually do any major damage on Doubt's eco. And indeed there is a stable, in fact a hidden stable that's actually quite Im uh, important. So Doubt is making this stable so that uh, Blue cannot see it. I'm fairly certain that Blue scout over here that is trying to bash down the walls might be able to spot it. But he's intentionally not placing that right next to the wall. Making sure that uh, Blue doesn't know what he's actually preparing for. Uh, the other thing... I didn't, or I don't know if you've seen it or not, but Doubt was actually placing the corner of this building on a little hill. You cannot see it right now, but this basically means that this building is considered to be uphills. So if someone wants to destroy it from here, let's say, that's gonna be counting as an uphill shot and eventually be weaker against the building. So that's that's just a small thing to point out. But indeed, market and uh, stable it's somewhat reasonable because you can balance out your eco and be up faster if you have a slightly unbalanced eco but scouts for doubt scouts could we see light calf from doubt that would be weird that would be super weird to be honest anyways i like the fact that he's using the hunt over here as well gonna get some extra food for himself so he didn't need to farm up until this point and now he's gonna replace those walls with a pile side gate. Meanwhile, blue is gonna be fully walled as well by the time Doubt arrives. So, blue is gonna be able to click up as well. 
In the long run, I think uh, Doubt's Fast Castle will not re yield any major result, to be honest. Because by the time, like I said, those knights arrive, which will probably arrive, as it's gonna be a monastery coming up. Oh, I get it. It's not gonna be knights. It's not gonna be knights, it's gonna be light calves and monks. The idea here, you don't even need light calf. The idea here is that you want to grab the relics for yourself. There's five relics scattered all around the map. First of all, Doubt needs to scout them because he only has vision on two, but as you can see, he's just scouting with everything he has. And uh, on the other side, you want to make sure that your opponent cannot pick up the relics. So this is why you're making light caps. And what do you mean by uh, NFL's bracket? Yep, it's, it's quite harsh when you miss those relics, it happens, but Doubt has vision on three out of the four ones, and one in this corner, I am fairly certain no one's gonna find this. Oh, who do you think is gonna be Super Bowl? I think it's too early for that, depends on injuries. Um, my Super Bowl prediction? It's rough. It's fairly rough. Um, I would say most likely 49ers versus Patriots. That's my prediction. But like I said, it depends on minor injuries. So if let's say there is a few injuries in San Francisco, I could say that Seattle has a better chance of getting into Super Bowl. I feel like every time the Patriots lose to a big team in the AFC, in the regular season, they just strike back in the playoffs. So I definitely think that the Patriots do have a chance to beat both the Chiefs and the Ravens in the playoffs as well. So, yep. That is a tendency of the Patriots, by the way. They lose to strong teams in uh, the regular season, but then really, really stack themselves up and uh, prepare for the game in the playoffs, and they win that. So... I would say Patriots do have a chance of getting in, especially considering that I'm still not confident Lamar Jackson is gonna be able to play through the entire season. He could get injured any moment. Like, his pay style is spectacular, but it is super risky what he's doing. Anyways, back to the game here. Oh, poor Spearman getting eaten by a wolf. Ornlu taking advantage of the situation. Meanwhile, you can also see that there is some Spearman guarding the relics. So far, Doubt has gotten one relic, and he eventually finds the one in the corner, that's impressive. People often forget to scout the corners, but as you can see, Doubt has even done that. In fact, Doubt has like nearly perfect scouting of the scoutable surface of the map. So, Mima Blue is not really doing anything major, just gonna go for the monastery and gonna go for TC's boom. Meanwhile, on the other side, Doubt is just free TCs, so in the long run, Blue is gonna be able to outmass him in terms of uh, villagers. Doubt game Sam's, yep, of course, Lord and Savior will see all, so this is gonna be a tricky scenario. You will probably have four TCs uh, against three TCs plus five relics. In the long run, of course, relics will really pay off for Doubt. Uh, I'm gonna be curious who takes control over this neutral gold mine, though. Uh, that's gonna be an important factor. Now, look at that Spearman just stabbing down that barracks. And I want to point out this minor pile side wall over here, making sure that uh, Blue is gonna be able to spot if uh, Doubt has any villagers passing by or any military unit that is not a scout or a monk or a siege unit. Because once the mo wolf moves, you can clearly see that because there is he's not gonna be standing on the pile side wall foundation. Anyways, if uh, if Blue is lucky, he might be able to snag one of these relics. But Doubt does have a Spearman here. Like I said, yep, indeed, there is the Vululu coming, and Doubt is just gonna delete that. That's actually smart from him. Wants to make sure that Spearman goes to no one's hands, so just gonna delete it. Anyways, Blue is gonna be on one relic. I am fairly certain Doubt is gonna be able to grab that one. So it's a booming contest right now, and one thing that stands out. Blue is 59 villagers with 
4 TCs, Doubt is 59 with 3 TCs. So the only way a 4 TC boom works is if you can keep up a consistent production on all of your town centers. And as you can see, Blue is not producing anything on this town center, so this is essentially 3 town centers, and one of which, which is basically wasted resources. Also, we're pointing out why are you not using these sheep. So, yeah, this is basically a waste here. He could just produce villagers on that, and this is why I think that that is quite frequent. Uh, especially if you take a look at lower rated players like me, for example. If if I go for multiple town centers, I often forgot to produce villagers on all of them, and that basically... Why are all those guys garrisoned inside? What? What? So essentially I was thinking about, hey, with 4 TC you should outboom 3 TC, but you won't because one of your town centers is idle. And the other one, okay, now it lets the villagers free, but a bunch of villagers were idle for quite a significant time. And uh, I could think about blue moving forward over here, trying to snipe that monk that's actually beautiful. Very, very nice from uh, blue sniping that monk. And there's gonna be a spearman moving forward as well. And the forward cancel on the gold pilot, actually like that. We'll probably see Mengarize at some time. But still, I am mad at Blue for not using the final town center to produce villagers. This would be his way to grab an advantage over Doubt. Because Doubt is easily keeping uh, up with villager count. In fact, Doubt is gonna massively outboom him with 5 town centers. That's gonna be impressive. Imagine 5 town centers and 4 relics for Doubt. That's an amazing amount of resources he's gonna have very soon. Probably Imp is coming soon, and he's gonna stonewall off the left side. Very smart stonewalls again. Gonna secure the stone pile and the extra gold mine by quite a bit. So, basically only no man's land is left for blue here. On the other side though, blue is gonna have the other secondary gold. Another monk being sniped by blue, so that will definitely having some trouble with that single light cap over there. And the stone mine over here is gonna be claimed for Doubt. So both players are just basically booming right now, but like I said, Doubt is gonna be having a way larger villager count, especially with Blue uh, not consistently producing villagers on all of his town centers. Now he started doing it on this TC, but... Yeah, map control equals farm space, that's true. And this is where it gets interesting, like I said. Both players starting to chop at the very narrow tree lines, so... So, honestly, if the, they don't pay attention, there might be a moment in the game when this path right alongside the wood line is gonna be open. There is always one tile you can walk past the trees, so this is a walkable line of uh, path. So, yeah, but... Indeed, Vendor Nomad, this is gonna get very interesting. Delta is gonna be walling this off. In fact, one of the villagers will venture forward and get some outposts done. It's again a smart move from Doubt, making sure that he's not gonna get pressured very early. So, yeah, that outpost will warn him if there is any trouble coming his way. Mango dies and Rams coming up with Blue still far away from Imperial. Oh no, he's going up to Imp. Um, yeah, both players going Imp here. But Doubt is gonna have a better villager count, even though not by much, to be honest, just 7 villagers lead. But he has invested in 5 town centers, compared to just 3 town centers. Or 4, to be honest. But yep. 4 relics can definitely be helpful as well. Oh boy. Doubt. Oh, poor Doubt. Okay, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine. Just fine surviving that wolf attack. Anyways, like I said, these mango I have like zero upgrades, so this feels a bit premature, to be honest, producing battering grams. Of course, when you get the cap drum upgrade, it's gonna be nice uh, to start off with. You get the ballistics. And do you have a blacksmith? Because you need upgrades. You have a go Paladar Archer and Botkin Arrow. And yeah, I really hope there is gonna be a raid as well. The funny thing is that it might just be non-intentional pathfinding. So, let's say if Doubt makes a unit here and just right-clicks here, it might just go through here. That would, that would be interesting. Anyways, oh boy, one villager being sniped down here from Blue. So, Blue did a decent job sniping Doubt's villagers, and now it's gonna be another castle here. It's essential for Blue to keep this hill and keep control over this gold pile, and I really like the way that he's using this gold pile first, and not this one. Sometimes players are just going for this gold pile or this gold pile here because, hey, it's close, I'm just gonna take it. But in fact, going for this one will mean that even if he loses control over this part of the map, he will still have safe gold. So the fact that he's securing the backup gold is actually quite important. Stable for bloodlines on the way. 
And a CG workshop on the left makes me believe that we are gonna see rams trying to push through here with potential light cavalrys coming up to the left side, maybe targeting that gold mine. I wonder if blue sees that. Yeah, blue sees that. So blue could go for rams and light cav over here to start raiding the left side. Bunch of upgrades coming up from blue chemistry bracer, kept the ram. Meanwhile, that is gonna go. Oh boy, look at those dudes. Imperial skirms for doubt, and he's gonna have a bunch of traps as well. Blue is not making any traps over here, so winning that trap fight is not possible for him right now. However, Dao doesn't really have anything against those rams, so skirms will not even scratch them. And as you can see, Blue can probably see the villagers moving forward now. See, this is not producing anything, but you can clearly see that there is gonna be scouts, soon to be light calves being popped out. In fact, I think Blue needs to speed up his light cap production, because at this point it's gonna be all about... Um, all about trying to deal with those skirmishers. And there is the rams. You just want to make sure that that single scout cannot actually destroy them. Because skirms can't even scratch them. As you can see, the castle is still holding. But you gotta keep it up. If you lose this gold man for blue, you're in a bad situation. Because doubt has guaranteed gold over here. So essentially doubt will have way more gold to work with. But luckily for you, doubt doesn't have anything that can actually damage those rams. Aside from villagers. And this is why you should try to send in the uh, mangodai. Maybe... Crabs trying to flee here, and oh boy, Blue could just bait those villagers into the Mangodai, or even better, the Castle Fire, but like I said, stopping those rams is gonna be a tiny bit challenging, problem is that uh, those skirms are still somewhat scary, so... Onagers could definitely be an answer to, for that, but as long as you have the villagers bashing down those rams, it's not really a big problem for uh, out, I think. So rams only work if you have anything that can actually stop villagers from bashing them down. But it looks like they're just chasing the oh, oh, traps here. Oh boy. That feels like a waste from blue to be honest. Being able to kill at least like one or two traps maybe. But you definitely need some mangonels or onagers to deal with that uh, blob of skirms. Like you cannot just go full mangonize here. There is no way you can actually do that against that many skirmishers because... You know, these are imp skirms, and they will just absolutely decimate Mangarize. So I'm still missing a bunch of stables, and would you look at that, galleys. And indeed, there is the overchop from both players. This is the chance for either of the players to just run into the other's eco. Of course, Doubt has multiple pieces over here, so it's unlikely that major damage would be done, as the traps are ready to set up again. Bunch of uh, rams ready to roll down hills as well. This is gonna be an interesting fight, and we got galleys. We got galleys here, and the funny thing is that they can actually do damage if they want. Siege Ram on the way for blue, he's just waiting for that. Still, I firmly believe he needs something to deal with these skirms. If he has like, I don't know, 20 light caps, this would be amazing, because now Doubt has onagers, and onagers will just destroy those uh, rams super easily. You definitely need light cap over here in quite rapid pace, to be honest. And not even a single stable very close, so this looks quite grim. Oh boy. As you can see, even siege rams will die to onagers fairly fast. So maybe they can take down a few traps and save this castle, although that might be unlikely as well. Although there is a bunch of uh, traps going down, so guess what? Onagers are not that impressive at stopping siege rams. They are good at capped rams, but not siege rams. And the skirms cannot do anything as well. Multiple traps are going down. In fact, did I just see Doubt's uh, skirmishers getting damaged by the ram as well? Like the ram's collateral damage? And you can also see Trebs trying to get some kills on the... Oh, look at that. Poor guy just got headshot from a trap. But yep. Skirm trying to push up heals here. Like I said, a few onagers could really just destroy this entire army from Doubt. Meanwhile, Gal is so far not having any pressure on the eco, but... You can clearly see both players do have a chance to just run into the opponent's eco here. Meanwhile, this is what I was waiting for. Blue is just gonna push the left side, still missing the light cap upgrade, which is quite surprising considering the fact that he's facing a pure skirmisher approach. I feel like he's just too stubborn to go for the standard strategy he thought about. He said, hey, I'm just gonna go... Look at that. He's still amassing Mangodai against full skirms. Now, Dao doesn't have an impressive micro over here, and remember there's a bunch of Mangodai's as well, so this castle has amazing attack. Oh boy, Dao, what are you doing? No way, Dao. Oh man. There goes the entire army of Dao. Like, so many skirms biting the dust. It's just... 
It's just so bad to look at. Oh man. And meanwhile, like I said, light cab on the left side, and now that gold mine is exposed, no castle, and the light calves can just flood in. And this means that uh, Daud will have a bit of a trouble with gold control. I'm not a major fan of this um, siege ram push over here because Daud cannot just beat it down with villagers. But now that you have the Ferrari rams that actually outrun villagers, you can just start going for buildings here. Going for a siege workshop, probably being afraid of onagers, could be an okay idea. But I don't think that you can actually take that castle down with just four um, siege rams. And the funny thing is, Blue is just brute forcing this. This is not about outsmarting Doubt here, it's just... Yeah, I'm just gonna go for more uh, Siege Rams. By the way, Blue has way better eco than Doubt. 156 villagers to 117, so it's all about having way more resources. Doubt is also floating a lot of wood, to be honest. Anyways, like I said, the left side is looking quite bad for Doubt. It's just a single layer of Palisade was separating him from absolute destruction. And he's also losing this gold pile, so it's looking grim for Doubt. There is an onager over here, but popping that out with light cab around is, is kind of suicide right now. And no way. Did that villager just walk all the way through? I can't believe that. Or is it just a villager scouting this? You might be able to fit a tower over here, to be honest. Of course, Doubt can just run away somewhere else. As we are seeing elite battle of Fantos, they have been a nerfed a tiny bit in the east, so they have a lower attack. Instead of 16, they only have 14. And Battle of Elephant could be okay at cleaning up the rams and cleaning up the light cab over here. But as you can see, Blue is definitely pushing towards this gold mine, and that's something that Doubt will have to stop. And meanwhile, there is gonna be another annoyance here on the board. We are seeing galleys pressuring Doubt's eco. Meanwhile, right side though, look at the Dumbos going uphill. Drabs and Skirms. This is why I'm not a fan of the composition of Blue here. Blue was like, yeah, I can just win with uh, Mangadai, but you can't win with Mangadai because skirmishers will absolutely destroy Mangadai. Now, if you use the castle to kill the skirmishers, maybe this is doable because you can use the Mangadai to kill the uh, Elephantos, but if Elephantos just absorb all the arrow fire, then this is perfect for doubt. And this is getting interesting because Blue is losing his grasp on this hill and there is still a bit of gold left over here. On the other hand though, Doubt is losing a lot of map control here on the far left, even though there is gonna be Elefantos popping out for him as well. And oh boy, this is the moment I was waiting for. Come on, light calves. Just start bashing down those uh, skirms. That's exactly what we were uh, waiting for. These light calves could be so impactful if they can just destroy most of those skirmishers. This is nearly perfect. And in fact, Doubt uh, could just lose all of his villagers on the front line here as well. Doubt 100 villagers. Blue at 140, which is a quite impressive wager count for him, and I'm not sure if Elefantos can actually uh, win this fight for him alone. Of course, Hussars will get destroyed by Elefantos, but um, the critical mass of Mangura, if you have that, you can just snap down those Elefantos with the hit and run tactics. So that could be interesting. Meanwhile, on the other side, it looks like Blue is gonna get cleaned up by the Elefantos. So, Doubt is still retaining control over these gold mines, for the time being at least. Uh, right now, Blue's military is just down to 32, and Doubt is making a dock himself for fire ships. Man, oh man. This is a clear entrance to either player's base. Blue does have a lot of idols, by the way, so 142 villagers, but 30 of them are idols, which is not an impressive um, count, to be honest. So, yeah, fully upgraded Mangurai over here. Will be. Okay-ish, I, I would say, against the elephants. Problem is gonna be that they are facing retin archers, for example. And retin archers are quite good against uh, Mangurai as well. Eat Pierce Armor Toro. Mangurai can't even scratch them, to be honest. Yep, I agree, Vendor Nomad. But you also have to take a look at the other point of view. If you heavily invest into something like War Galley, let's say, and you cannot kill villagers with that, that's a waste of an investment. So I understand that uh, Blue only went for two galleys. Being annoying, maybe getting some villager kills. In fact, think that uh, Doubt's overextension on War might not p uh, pay off here. Like, the War Galley upgrade, even though, like I said, he's, he's got a guard tower here. He knows that his woodline could be towered. Anyways, um, let's take a look at the right side. Left side is also interesting here because we're seeing barracks coming up from uh, blue. And that's looking bad. If you're seeing barracks from uh, 
Mongols in late Imperial. That probably means he's trying to go for Halberdiers. I think this could be the composition here for Doubt. Gotta go for Skirmishers and Battle Elephants. You need the Pikes to counter the Elephantos, and you also need something to deal with those Skirmishers, and I don't think that Blue has any answer to the Skirms overall. Like, he's trying to make Elite Skirms, but Elite Skirms will not work against the Imperial Skirms by any means, so... This isn't really gonna work for uh, Blue here. He does have a bunch of Light Caps, though. So if he can pop out those Light Caps and start killing the Skirms, that could still work. But, like, for example, this is, feels like a waste here. Just going in. Doubt also making some Light Caps himself. There's the Pikes coming up. Doubt is gonna blow it off. And Doubt is gonna go Galleon. This is the moment when... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I feel like this is gonna be YouTube content. So yeah, right side is definitely falling for blue. Red marchers really can't do the work here against the Mangadai with the Exo Pier Summer they have, just as well as the Skirmishers. And the problem is that the Light Cavs will just struggle against the Elephantos overall. So unless you have a big number of Light Cavs, this could be problematic. The other thing to point out though, uh, blue does have way more Voyagers than Doubt, but usually has way more idols as well. Still, I believe that blue had better eco than Doubt. Even though, as you can see, Blue is folding a lot of wood, um, no food though, on the other side Doubt has a way more balanced eco, but overall the fact that Blue had better eco for most of the game could mean that he's gonna be able to outlast um, Doubt, even though Doubt is taking fairly efficient fights. So yep, long, uh, long term eco could be important, and we are seeing Elite Skirms, Elite Skirms will not even scratch these guys, look at that, plus 4 Pierce Armor, 42 HP, 4 plus 4 attack, versus 3 plus 4, or just 4 plus 2 armor. These guys can't scratch it. What you need here is probably onagers, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And the other problem could be wood control indeed. The fact that you have a very thin wood line over here means that you will run out of wood very soon. As you can see, Doubt is also pushing on the north, so Blue might be having wood issues on uh, Oasis, which is already as fun as it is. And also, he's fighting up hills against much more uh, stronger skirmishers. That is looking very, very bad for him, to be honest. So yeah, if you take a look at the score, Doubt is still behind, but situationally he's way better. Let's not forget he also has 5 relics, oh wait, no, just 4 relics, and Blue has 1, but still. Yep, uh, having Voodoo shoes. That's, that's one of the phrases I use frequently. It's like, he has nice wood. You know, there is some phrases I use. Anyways. Um, Blue is trying to stop this with pikes, but you know, pikes against fully upgraded elite battle elephants will not really work. And in fact, as expected, Blue is just gonna lose most of his skirmishers here because he's facing way stronger units. Meanwhile, we got a war fight here over here, so he really wants to go out proud and wants to take a galleon fight into Oasis. What a game this is, and Doubt is also piling up a bunch of galleons. So. At this point, we are talking about, of course, there is some fights over here on the other side of the map with some fortified walls and stuff like that, you know, and there's some skirmishers killing villagers because... But who cares about that? Especially, by the way, Blue has a lot of uh, light cap over here, he could just clean this up fairly easily. When you got a galleon fight on Oasis, these are fairly well upgraded uh, galleons on both sides, but I think Doubt also has careening. So he even went for careening just to have some extra pierce armor on those ships. It looks like he's gonna be able to sink the fleet of blue over here. Blue, like I said, despite the fact that he had a way better eco for most of the game, he feels to be behind a tiny bit, but he's pushing on the right side. So Doubt invested super heavily on the war. I wonder if he's gonna go for cannon galleons. I don't even know if Vietnamese do have cannon galleons or not. But this could be problematic for Doubt if he overextends on the war. By the way, there is a villager chilling there. Because now... The right side again is getting pushed by blue, even though he doesn't have the siege to actually destroy buildings with it, so it could be problematic for him, but only 27 villagers, and yeah, this is why water control could be a problem for blue. He's gonna lose most of his villagers on the farms, or he will have to reposition his uh, villagers, and he's gonna run out of wood at some time, because, like I said, right side is getting very heavily pushed, so he cannot actually chop wood here, and left side is also getting pushed. And the coastline is getting covered by a bunch of galleons. I wonder if he's gonna try to do any effort towards stopping those galleons. Maybe a defensive tower that could start sinking those ships. And Doubt is moving forward with Ruji. If he could just land a stable here, for example, and start popping out elephants, that would be amazing. Anyways, Doubt is gonna switch into light calves, seeing that his opponent is going super heavy on elite skirms. Well, Manganize will just 
absolutely destroy the light caps if they are not targeting the siege workshop. It's gonna be interesting. Remember, Doubt has this gold pile and this gold pile, and he has four relics. So we're talking about blue essentially running out of gold very, very soon. So it's gonna be full trash. The problem is that he's gonna go Pikeman and Elite Skirm versus probably Light Cav and uh, Imperial Skirm. So normally Trash Wars might work. Problem is gonna be that he's facing uh, Imperial Skirms over here. And meanwhile, a lot of his eco is being idled. I think a lot of villagers died to these Galleons as well. Look at that. He's just deleting the farms over here, making sure the villagers will not go back to those. But still. Now, destroying most of the eco here, and as you can see, this is the problem. Blue doesn't really have the capacity to pay attention for this one because he's busy, you know, dealing with fights on other sides of the map. So he's gonna lose a bunch of villagers. In fact, eco is equalized now, and Doubt is having the same amount of villagers. And Doubt also taking much more efficient trades right now. Like I said, four relics for him does have a bunch of extra gold compared to Blue as well. This is uh, supposed to be his game. Now has a thousand score lead, as expected. Uh, basically has ultimate map control, you know, has uh, all the gold he needs. Meanwhile, blue I think is officially out of gold. No, he has a bit of gold left over here, but aside from that, he's gonna be playing with trash units. And the problem is that the only trash unit he can actually make is gonna be, or that is realistically okay for him, is gonna be light caps. Because, like I said, Pikes will just die very easily to skirms. His skirms will die to imperial skirms as well. So guess what? Vietnamese elite skirms will really have a good effect on the battle here. If this was just a standard civ with any elite skirm, this would be a tiny bit more challenging for Doubt, even though he's still definitely in the driver's seat. As long as Blue doesn't have the follow-up military to destroy these buildings, it's gonna be nearly impossible for him to reclaim this gold pile. And meanwhile, indeed, Doubt is just gonna do the stables right next to your TC. Look at that. Look at that boy. We're also seeing crossbowman upgrade and scale mail for doubt. So a bunch of upgrades on the way for I'm not sure what to think about the crossbowman upgrade to be honest. But guess what? Blue is counterattacking on the right side. And this could be a big counterattack to be honest. I don't think that doubt really has any army to fight this one here. 54 army to 71, but doubt basically has nothing over here. Meanwhile, he's pushing the left side. So Blue's eco is in big, big danger if you think about that. Uh, also, there's some cannon galleons. And that's something I was actually waiting for. But guess what? Blue does have a decent push over here. And honestly, if he can just make a push on Doubt's base, that could be enough to finish him off. Like, this is gonna be super, super uh, tricky for Blue because he's also getting raided inside his own eco. I really hope that he's not gonna GG, but Doubt is also 98 villagers only. I'm thinking that's intentional deletion of villagers. But if Blue starts to hurry and starts killing villagers. This could be amazing for him. Still, needs to fall back into this part of the base. Or just kinda... Try to... Hold on against these guys. The castle over here is gonna be amazing, keeping uh, the Elephantos at bay. And remember that Blue still has 20 villagers lead, despite the fact that he has multiple stables right next to his town centers. But now, he's pushing forward with a bunch of rams. And... That's a lot of frames, that's a lot of mangra. If you can just go into Doubt's eco, then this could be an amazing victory for Blue. This is super challenging, like I said. Look at that, everything in flames and getting destroyed. But this is also a drawback of overextending on the war. Like, these guys will soon reach their limit. And after that, they will not be able to influence the battle in any ways. So, basically this will mean that uh, Doubt will have a lot of resources invested into cannon galleons and galleons that will have zero impact on the battle anymore. And meanwhile, on the right side, Look at that. It's super tricky, but if you think about this, yeah, sure, you got a bunch of cannon galleons here, but like I said, if you can clean these two scouts over here, Blue still has 111 villagers compared to 97, and there's just a bunch of Elephantos here that will probably get converted, maybe. And meanwhile, on the other side, if you take a look at Doubt's base, he's facing a bunch of traps, a bunch of rams, and there's a lot of light calves. Well, it's not a lot of light calves, actually. It's just a few of them. Oh, it's Elephantos, actually. But the problem is that these rams will be destroying buildings super fast. Look at that. Look at Doubt losing castles. Could Doubt lose this? Oh boy, he's making long swords. Excuse me? He's probably to fight the pikes here, but... Skirms could have been better, to be honest. Blue does have a bunch of trapped pikemen over here that will never actually have any more combat value. 
But yeah, Blue is losing a bunch of villagers and now he's behind in terms of villager count compared to Daud, but that could change very soon. So this is super tricky, like I said, Blue is kind of neglecting his eco right now, losing a lot of villagers, but if he can replenish that villager count and just go and start killing Daud's villagers, that could be amazing for him. But now I feel like Daud could be in the driver's seat, but it's tough to judge. Man at arms raiding his eco. Overall, I feel like he should transition in here and indeed get that gold mine as soon as possible. And there's gonna be a bunch of skirms moving forward. Light calves just need to destroy that. If light calves can destroy that many skirms, I think uh, blue could be fine. In fact, at this point, I could imagine blue just moving in with the you know, mangodai and start killing the villagers as much as he can. Blue is doing a decent job, by the way, cleaning up the skirms. Needs to make sure those mangodai stay alive as much as possible. Meanwhile, this is what I was talking about when I said pathfinding is that basically. You are tasking units from here to here, and this is the cl uh, fastest way to go. Anyways, Skirm's mostly cleaned up, and Battle of Fun's piling up in larger quantities. Long Swords on the way, but those bracks will be cleaned up by Sea Trams, and once we have these spikes through, you can actually start trading Doubt's Eco. So this is far from being over. Doubt has 20 Voyager's lead, but if Blue can just continue to replenish his Voyager count, this could be amazing, and indeed that is something that he does. And now, guess what? Daud is the player that runs out of gold, he does have uh, some extra gold from the relics, but he's definitely having trouble dealing with the Hussar raids over here, gonna get more skirmishers for himself. I still believe that Thrash Wars will definitely favor Vietnamese in this situation, but Daud was just going for skirmishers and battle of funds the whole game. So question is, if he just goes for full skirms here, then Blue can still go for a full Mangra or a full Light Cav, and that could be an okay spot for him. Daud is gonna go two-handed swordsman here. Okay, Boomer. But... Yeah, I don't... Like, these barracks will go down anyways. So yeah, this is what I was referencing to here. Look at the amount of resources invested in this fleet. Not only the ships being built, but it's also the... Upgrades that it costs for you to have Galleon, to have Cannon Galleon. Elite Cannon Galleon, actually. That's a big investment, and now you cannot do anything with it. If doubt... Uh, once play is smart, uh, he starts to make some light caps over here, and um, Doubt is definitely having some resource issues as well. Remember that Blue had better eco for most of the game, so this is doable for Blue. This is definitely doable. He's 20 villagers behind now, but Doubt is just having 68 military compared to 100. Uh, on the left side, Pikemen will probably bash their way through very soon, and indeed the light cap might be just going straight into the eco. That's probably the smart thing to do. Like I said, the fact that Doubt has a big fleet over here that is basically unable to do anything is just gonna be super impactful right now and indeed look at these light calves just running in Dao doesn't have a lot of units that can catch up with those light calves by the way so these are just um uh, skirms and elephantos that cannot actually catch up with uh with those light calves and now they are in doubt's eco and doubt's gonna be the one that starts losing villagers so Looking great. Looking great for blue, to be honest. So, at this point, I definitely think that he's gonna be able to take control over the game, despite the fact that Doubt has 4,000 score more. There is champions here for red. Honestly, I don't like the champions here, because blue can just go for skirms. Champions are gold-heavy units that can be easily countered by skirms, for example. Or even appropriate number of light caps can deal with champions. Meanwhile, Doubt is losing villagers as well, uh, decreasing his overall villager lead down to just 10. Milici is still the even for both players, and this is what I was waiting for from uh, Doubt. Needs to start making light calves over here, but this is a problem for him. He just has light calves without blast furnace. Meanwhile, he's facing full upgrade hussars. Mongol hussars, in fact, that have 118 HP, so these trash units are actually very, very good. So at this point, um, Blue doesn't have enough stone to make anything defensive over here. A few pile side walls might help his cause a tiny bit though. Destroying those... Honestly, he could just destroy those uh, stables with a single trap here, but... I don't think that's something that he uh, is actually prioritizing right now. But he's piling up a bunch of sea trams. And remember, the target could be Doubt's uh, Monasteries. He's raiding here as well, getting cleaned up. Uh, most of his forces got cleaned up here as well, but still... He retains uh, the Millich lead, then we'll just lead for Doubt right now. Meanwhile, on the right side, champions cleaning up the pikemen. 
like I said, Blue needs to make sure that those pikemen cannot raid him. And at this point, he needs to start chopping wood over here. That's safer, I think. Still, he's behind in terms of villager count, and that's something that he has to address very soon. And this is what I was referencing to. These are super beastly hussars. Probably one of the best hussars in the game uh, for Mongols. So, fighting that with those imp skirms is going to be very challenging. And meanwhile, Doubt is just going to go for light calves. You can see the difference. Light calves without blast furnace against hussars with full upgrades, basically. And again, Doubt is unable to utilize his fleet right now over here. He could just continue to raid Blue Zeke over here. I'm fairly certain that that could actually... Uh, Kill some more villagers, and I think at this point Blue should uh, try to get it up. And this is finally what I was waiting for, Halberdier for doubt. Halberdier could definitely uh, make it happen. Oh, look at the house walls. Look at the house walls when you actually house wall against champions. Did I mention that champions will destroy those houses in seconds? But this is just fine. This is just fine for Blue. This is why I said you just need to run away. Go back over here, take the wood where it's safe. Oh boy, that's a big fight. I nearly missed that. But Doubt doesn't really have the chance to hold on against this. Look at that. He does have a few onagers, but those will probably go down to the light calves. Overall, everything is swarmed by those uh, Mongol light calves. And when the Ferrari them start to destroy buildings, this is going to get very, very rough. Once you lose those onagers, that seems very, very rough. And overall, Doubt is losing grasp of this game. He still has 109 villagers compared to 100, and he's gonna start killing villagers over here, but what is the return value of that compared to what Blue is actually getting here? Where did Blue come back from? That was that was amazing. And again, I want to point out the big investment that Dalt made in the ships. I'm not completely confident it was worth it. Maybe it was to clean up uh, Blue's war eco, but or um, fleet overall, to make sure that his own wood line is safe. But honestly, if you think about the fact that he has invested into Elite Cannon Galleon while Blue was just prioritizing outside push, this is just good for him. Of course, Vietnamese Mirchi is not necessarily comparable to efficient use of uh, Mongols military, but still, Doubt had uh, four relics for the entire game, basically. And still, he's raiding the eco of uh, Blue over here, but now Blue has 10 villagers lead. Doubt is just losing way too many villagers. Look at his entire base getting cleaned up. Up. What? I, I need to get a music and just... Just cut that music for this. Look at that. Look at that dance. I think that's gonna be some quality YouTube content here. Just the dancing ram or some music. Oh boy, I could, oh, that's right, I'm gonna make a contest out of this one. So that, imagine a contest in which you just use that animation and drop any music you want behind it. That would be, that would be amazing. And you could just vote on the submissions, who has the best music behind that disco ram. Anyways, the cannon galleons... Taking down... The rams, that's where we have gotten to, to be honest. And in fact, wood is getting limited on the map. But now Doubt is severely behind. Look at that. Down to 60 villagers. Blue has came back from the hell. And yeah, the fairy rams are just amazing. And this is the crucial moment here. You gotta go for that monastery. If you take down the monastery and take away the, the relics from Doubt, then it's basically in the end of the story for him, to be honest. Because then he's gonna have no gold income. In fact, Doubt is already defeated, most likely. Like, look at that. Get 58 villagers, 26 of them is idle. The rest of them is about to be killed. Blue has made an amazing comeback here. And this was one amazing game, by the way, overall. The fact that we had uh, some Galleon battle on Oasis is already impressive. But... You don't tell me. You don't tell me Doubt is gonna go for Fish Eco. Holy moly. I guess what? So Doubt is like, yeah, who needs land? I'm just gonna go for full water because he still has control over the northern part of the map. And if he could start making Arbiters, that could be fun. Problem is that he doesn't have an answer to Mangadai right now. But he could think about, hey, I'm just gonna go for... Uh, I'm just gonna go for, uh, you know... 
skirms and hobbiteers. His eco right now is very, very bad, but <laughs> look at this man. Look at this man. At this point, he definitely has water control. You can't blame him for trying to get the water up. Efficiency of these fishing ships will definitely be interesting, but honestly, I don't know. This feels so weird. I swear if doubt comes back from this one, that's gonna be... That's gonna be one amazing freaking game. Look at that. He's just making fishing ships on all of his docks. At this point... Uh, one thing to point out, he also has a bunch of towers over here, and he has cannon galleons. The reason why cannon galleons are important is because Blue cannot just drop two towers to deny the uh, fishing. In fact, Blue cannot do anything against these fishing ships. Oh boy, this could be a big masterpiece. Oh, the problem is the villagers, though. I think Doubt has no TC. Oh wait, he has a TC. And he's trying to build houses. Yeah, the problem for Doubt is gonna be that he loses all of his houses right now. How? Well, no, he's not housed because he's losing all of his villagers just now. But, yep, the problem is that you cannot make houses on water. Well, that could be a fancy buff for humans, you know. They are not overpowered enough, they could make houses on water as well. Yeah, indeed. It's gonna be running out of pop space because you will have zero villagers alive to make houses. In fact, how many villagers does Doubt have? Because you cannot actually tell that from the villager count over here because there is like a bunch of fishing ships. I guess I could subtract it. So 22 fishing ships out of 44 villagers. Doubt still has two efficient lumberjacks over here that will survive. But oh no, he's just gonna GG this. What a game by Blue. Definitely YouTube content, so hi YouTube. I was I was about to start pumping out some more YouTube content as well, and that's gonna be a perfect game for it. What an amazing game from start to scratch. Like, the start was very, very boring. I would say basically no significant uh, thing happening. It just both players booming. But the end game, man, oh man. We had the Galleon battles on the Lake of Oasis. We had... A kind of back and forth battle over here, Blue pushing the base of Doubt, then getting counter-attacked, and then pushing it again. Pushing left side and then just getting pushed back. And overall, Blue has played amazingly. Let's take a look at the stats. Ministry stats. Fairly efficient trades for both sides. One thing to point out, um, though, 704 units killed, but that also includes a large number of elephants as well. So I think in terms of resource efficiency, Blue was actually more... Um, more efficient. Resources. Uh, as you can see, this is what I was referencing to. Way more food and kind of an uh, equal amount of wood. The food can be accounted to the fact that Blue had less access to gold, but gold is definitely on the side of doubt, so he had like 6,000 extra gold and he couldn't actually capitalize on that. Out of that 6,000 extra gold, by the way, doubt has 99% exploration, um, out of that 66 um, or 6,000 extra gold, all of it is relics. Look at that. 6,000 relic gold. But the main thing is here. 160 villagers, so Blue was able to have a decent eco. Like, he was probably having more eco than Dalt had for most of the game. And that kind of meant that he was able to outmuscle him, even though his units were much weaker equipped. Also, we're pointing out the fact that Dalt had 75 research compared to 53. So, Dalt has researched a lot of things even though he didn't make a lot of different units. So, for example, champion upgrade. Like, how efficient were champions against the Mangrai? This is a typical scenario when you just upgrade so many things that you do not have enough resources left to make units. So, a few of those uh, upgrades could have gone into units. For example, champion. Or, for example, elite cannon galleon. Because it was kind of obvious that if you clean up the shoreline, then your opponent is just gonna fall back into the corner and you cannot hit that with the cannon galleon. Anyways, bye YouTube. Thanks for staying around because this was one amazing game.